want to is the key to anything. That's good advice as well. You really must have the drive to want to do it as well, don't you? Um, one man who I suspect is not a smoker is sitting right in front of me now because he's a professional sportsman and he is Peter Creed. He's our uh, Wales', Wales is number one uh, men's squash player. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot too much by saying you're not a smoker, are you? <laughs> you don't have to worry about giving up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not an issue for me. I'm no, I'm sure it isn't. <laughs> Great to see you, Peter. The reason Peter's with us is uh, the, the 2013 Welsh National Squash Championships are starting... Um, in Cardiff tomorrow. Uh, actually, the first round is Friday, I think, Peter, isn't it? Yeah, first round's Friday night. So. First round, Friday night. And we've got the finals on, on Sunday. Uh, Peter, as I said, uh, is the number one uh, Welsh player, uh, ranked number 70 in the world. Got that right yeah. as well. From Caffili, good Caffili boy. <laughs> and uh, you've won this title the last three years on the bounce, is that right? Yeah, uh, this my this will be my fourth time competing, uh, hopefully, for the, for the title. I've won it three times and... Uh, my coach is, has won it a lot more times than me, so I'm, you know there's a few goals and a few targets to hit. So you, hit don't, think, you don't think it's a shoe in this time around, do you? <laughs> oh, we'll see. There's a few uh, tough competitors in there, so hopefully there'll be no upsets. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's always great to have an upset because it makes it that much more exciting for the, the for the um, the people in the crowds and the viewers on, on TV and listeners on the radio. But from your your guys' point of view, I mean, you've, <laughs> you've got the form on it. You must be the favourite going in. Yeah, hopefully I'm, I'm the favourite. Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple of professional you know, players in the tournament, but uh, I've been playing well recently and uh, hopefully I'll be peaking for this event. Yeah, absolutely. well, you have been playing very well recently and you ranked, as we said, 70 in the world. Yep. Uh, that's not a sort of a target or a, an achievement that that's that too many other Welsh players have, have managed to do, is it? Um, yeah, I think there's only probably about five or six players that have uh, been ranked higher than me prior to this. Um, I've had a pretty good year. Um, I've gone up from, I think, 118 to 70 in the last 12 months, so it's been a a strong year. It's been a big push, and you know, I've started to become a lot more professional, and it's been, you know, things things are moving forward. Well, what was it about squash? Why squash? Why squash rather than I don't know football or rugby or athletics or whatever? Um, basically, my father just used to play and kind of got me involved, you know, just once a week, and I just loved the the individual side of it really, that everything was down to myself and I couldn't leave anything to chance of teammates. You know, I've, maybe it's a little bit selfish of me, but. Uh, you know, I, I like the competitiveness of being, you know, caught in that cage of a court and, you know, having to battle it out between you and one other person. So Yeah, they do say with sports people, they tend to fall into two camps, one of two camps, don't they? Either the people who like to be part of a team and the others who just want to rely on themselves. And you're one of those, the latter category, I presume. I am, for yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> so just for those who, who've never played it in, in, in the past... Give us an, a basic idea of what actually happens in squash. What, what's the main aim? I mean, obviously to beat your opponent, but I mean, it's so fast and furious. I mean, what are you doing? The aim is just to kind of um, put the, the ball into areas where your opponent isn't um, to try and force the, the ball to bounce twice so they can't retrieve it. You've got a, an outline and a, a lower tin that you've got to keep the ball within. And um, yeah, it's quite, it's a fast, it's an enjoyable sport, it's competitive. And a lot, you know, a lot of my friends play it on a social basis because... You know, in a 45-minute court session, you can get a hell of a workout, you know, rather than going to the gym and running on the treadmill, you know, for 45 minutes. It's, it's something that, you know, takes your mind away from actually building up a sweat, maybe losing weight or working out. So It, it is incredibly fast and furious. I mean, I played a lot of tennis, but I mean, got onto the squash court and I was absolutely shattered by the end of, never mind 45 minutes, I was <laughs> shattered by the end of five minutes. I mean, you know, the hand-eye coordination and, and the reactions are, 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 have got to be lightning fast, haven't they? I mean, you know, it's not just something you come in and think, you know, I can whack a ball around with my squash racket. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very dynamic, you know, and um, the attributes that go with the sport, uh, you know, second to none. That's why, you know, we're really pushing for it to be an Olympic sport because, we believe that squash, you know, it, well, it would be the pinnacle of the sport, but it's such a dynamic and competitive and fast sport that, you know, the Olympics thrives on them, you know, them type of sports. And we feel that we should definitely be part of that. Well, that's something I know we're going to be discussing a little bit uh, later on. You know, we're getting uh, Tesney Evans with us as well, who I know is your female uh, counterpart as far as uh, the, the, world, the Wales number one ranking is concerned. Um, but from your point of view, obviously national championships here now, I mean, that's the focus at this point in time, you know, getting bigger and bigger? Yeah, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, the, the comp competition is, is stronger this year. We've got 110 entries, which is, the, I think, the biggest national championships we've had for a, a number of years. I, you know, since I've been playing, I know it's not been as big as this. So it's good to show that the sport's growing in Wales. You know, the squash is becoming more popular and hopefully 
we'll have a bit, a bit more of a boom, you know, rather than uh, decline in the sport and, you know, grow, grow the sport and yeah. increase the number of courts in the country. It'd be so. nice to think so, because it's still regarded very much as a minority sport, I know, and I, I know yeah, you I wanted agree. to change the face of that. Peter Creed is with us. Uh, he is the Wales' number one men's squash player. We'll be joined by Tesney Evans in a few minutes' time as well. She's the women's number one, uh, ahead of the National Squash Championship starting in Cardiff on Friday. We'll also be talking about the, uh, the campaign to get squash uh, included in the Olympics. Already part of the Commonwealth Games, both Peter Peter and Tesney will be taking part in Glasgow in what is now a year's time. OK, we've got the foundations coming up. Build me up. BBC Radio Wales. This is BBC Radio Wales, where we're talking squash ahead of the Welsh National Championships, which are uh, getting underway, first round underway this Friday uh, at the uh, Welsh National Sports Centre right here in Cardiff. Very pleased to say still with me in the studio is uh, Peter Creed, who's uh, the Welsh men's number one. And joining us on the line is his female counterpart, Tesney Evans. How are you, Tesney? I'm good, thank you. And how are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks very much indeed. Great, great to hear from you. Um, talking about Peter, he's won it the last three times on the bounce. So your your record's not too shabby in this tournament either, is it? No, it's not too shabby, but always could be better. <laughs> how many times have you won it in the past? Uh, I've only won it once. Not right. this year. Not last year. The year before that. So you're you're ready to go for the crown again, aren't you? I'm definitely ready to go for it, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. We were just talking to Peter um, just before we went to the music there about um, you know, why he loves squash so much. And he was saying he's very much you know, an individual, that he wants to rely on himself, you know, his, his coordination, his reactions, that sort of thing. Is it the same for you? Uh, yeah, I think it's the same for me. I, uh, you know, you can rely on yourself. You haven't got anyone else to blame. Um, but I also do love playing in a team situation when there's a lot more on it. And uh, I love playing with other people where uh, you're score counts, if you know what I mean. Right, so it's a cumulative thing with everybody's score going forward on that one. I was going to say, because yeah. there's not a whole team of you on the court, is there? No, 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 just one-on-one, <laughs> on one, but yeah. in a team event, you know, where you have three people in a team and you're trying to win the match, and it's really good, and uh, I, I like being in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you are uh, you won't mind me saying that you're, you're just 19 at the moment, Tesney, so still uh, plenty of years ahead of you in terms of uh, world titles and hopefully potentially an Olympic title at some point if the campaign goes well. Uh, but you've also been a national junior and a senior uh, champion. You held those titles at the same time, is that right? That is right, yeah. I held them at the same time two years ago, which was a good feeling to have. And I don't think many people have done that either, which was nice to... Hold yeah. myself. Nice to set the pace on that one. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to hear from, from both of you, because obviously you know Peter, don't you? I don't need to introduce you, yeah. do you? No, oh, no. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you did know each other. Um, are there any differences between the men's and, and women's game um, in, in terms of, you know, the, the squash, you know, sort of like tennis, you know, women will play three sets, men will play five in a grand slam. Any differences, Tesney? Uh, no, there isn't any difference with the scoring. Uh, the game is a lot different. I mean, the men's game is a lot harder than the women's game. Um I mean, if you're starting out as a guy playing, it's really difficult to, um, you know, to reach that top level. And um, I think just the speed of it, really, and their fitness levels are amazing. I mean, ours are good, but the boys are very good. Uh, Peter's uh, sitting here smiling very modestly on that, but presumably you'd agree, Peter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just I think just with the the men's capabilities, it, the speed of the game is a little bit quicker. It's a little bit more dynamic and. Uh, maybe a bit more ferocious in in terms of the um, you know the competitiveness on the court. Um, the women, you know, it's always improving, and the, you know, I think the top ten in the women is very strong at the moment, and that's filtering down into the, a lot of the other players. Do you, Tesney, do you ever sort of feel slightly, you know, the, the women are are you know slightly on the back foot with it? Like we've seen, you know, in in sports in the past, like tennis, where the women's game was not as highly paid or, or necessarily always as quite as highly regarded as the men's game. Is it? Do you have a sense of that in squash as well? And is that something you're trying to change? Um, yeah, I think there is a, definitely a sense of it, um, especially with prize money and putting tournaments on. I mean, a lot of promoters and sponsors want to see the men play, in, um, which is difficult for the women to try and um, you know progress on. But I think a lot of the top women are, are producing like great squash and also promoting it really, really well. Mm. And I think it's definitely catching up, but I think it could be a while before it does reach the same level. What about investment in the game? I mean, are you seeing increases in investment? Yeah, and definitely. The last, the last uh, year or so, I think, definitely, in they're putting more money on. The World Open this year, I think, was a record um, or a very high prize money, um, which hasn't been for a while, which is good. But uh, definitely more work to do on it, too. Yeah, and presumably just to get more sponsors involved as well. The more sponsors involved in it, you know, the more attractive it becomes, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And the more the more they watch, the more they watch, the more they see of it, the more they want to see it more. And then 
they can think about going back next year and putting on bigger money and, and, and attracting the better players, the more money, the, the better players they attract to the tournament. Uh, Peter, I was going to ask you about this. I mean, you know, obviously with you and Tesney, you know, thoroughly love what you do. It must be amazing to be a player in, in, in that sort of cauldron. What, what do you think it's like as a spectator watching squash? I mean, is it an easy game for spectators to watch, really? I think it's a tough one, really. I, you know, with tennis, you watch it on TV and you appreciate how hard they're working and, you know, so many people can relate to that sport. I think with squash, it's it's always been a tough one to televise because the higher the level with squash, the easier it looks on TV. So, you know, you don't get that kind of absorption into watching it that, wow, they're working so hard and they're sweating so much because you can't really appreciate it. I think once you've, you know, seen it live or, you know, the technology of how we televise it on TV gets better, then, you know, I think more people will invest in it. But until... Until it's shown more live on TV, I, you know, I think it's always going to struggle. Yeah, it's, it's the age-old catch-22 situation, isn't yeah. it? Let's talk about this Olympic situation, because squash missed out on becoming part of Rio in 2016, lost out to, uh, to golf and rugby sevens. Plan, planning ahead now for, for 2020. Uh, what, what's your feeling on this, Peter? I mean, is, is there a sense that there's momentum behind this now, that it's only just a matter of time, or you've still got a lot of work to do? I, th- I think this this time our bid's been really strong. I'm very confident that it's, it's you know it should be included. Um, the IOC I know have just watched the uh, the Super Series event in Hong Kong, which was televised, um, played on the front of the harbour harbour, which was a you know great backdrop for the event. Uh, the bid's just gone in, and I'm, I'm you know I'm pretty confident. I did say that last time, mine at 2016, but. Looking at you know the overall bid and, and the amount of effort and time and money that we've invested into into this proposal, I'm, I'm you know I'm pretty confident it's going to go in. How, how about you, Tesney? How are you feeling about this? I mean, is there a sense that you really want your sport to stop being regarded as a, a minority sport and being part of the Olympics might do that? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, the bid this time has been really good. A lot of people have been working constantly hard at trying to promote it in every way possible and in every tournament, putting it on people's shirts and and everything like that, and getting the whole uh, world involved in the 2020 day. And I think once it does get in, I think then we'll just shoot up. I think it'll be more televised. People will have seen it, will have watched it, want to go and play it. And I think from there, I think it'll just be even better for us. Well, absolutely. It's like curling in the Winter Olympics. I mean, nobody was really involved in that, and it then became so popular, didn't it? I mean, it's it's one of those things that you just need that extra bit of push. Um, just in terms of uh, your very quickly now with the championships this weekend, then Tesney, um, you who you're up against in the first round? Are you pretty confident? Um, I don't know. The draw doesn't actually come out till tomorrow morning, so I don't actually know who I'm playing. But um, I'm just going to go in with it with a lot of confidence and. See how it all goes out. Hey, listen, nobody's going to bet against you. The very best of luck on that. And to you, Peter, as well, you know. And uh, we're just, uh, no pressure, but we're looking for silverware from both of you. So just to to let you know that your country's behind you, Okay. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you, Peter Creed and Tesney Evans there. Best of luck in the championships.